Sloss and Humphreys on the road. Muggins and cream, cream and muggins, straight thugging, living the dream. That, that's our intro. Fucking muggles. Tickling the clit inside your head to make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> they said it can't be done. Are we keeping the audio or are we going again? <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, I think we should just go again. Right, all right. Because um, I basically started the podcast off by calling you fat. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, 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 you asked how my health was and I told you it wasn't good. And uh, you saw me try to file my belly down to... I saw you diving after a snowboard. Did you actually see it? Oh, no, I didn't. Aye. I didn't see it. Aye. I just, it, I caught wind. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I caught felt, air. I felt the rumble. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the avalanche. Thank, well, thank God it was an icy day, otherwise there would have been. So we've just come back from Altitude Festival, which is obviously... The, the greatest festival in oh, the world. the best. I had such a good yeah, time. Yeah. Um, like, and, uh, not to get too fucking comedy political already, but I saw somebody from Melbourne Comedy Festival being like, this is why this is the greatest festival on the planet. Like, f- first of all, first of all, right. you're, you are a tenth at most the so this- size of Edinburgh and you're the second busi- busiest, biggest comedy festival. So let's rein that fucking attitude in. This is the conclusive evidence that... Altitude is infinitely better than Melbourne. Is I have been in Melbourne with so many comedians who have FOMO about being at Altitude because they've been and they know fucking how good it is and they're seeing people's posts about it. Can you remember anyone from last week that had FOMO of Melbourne? Mm-mm. No. Did they, any, did they even get mentioned? Did they even come up? Well, like, yeah, we're, like, I, we're liking them. I mentioned, I was like, because it was my first Altitude since 2017 and people were asking why. And I was like, because unfortunately, we'll these comedy Melbourne. festivals always mm. go over the top of it most of the time as a as a business person mm-hmm. it makes sense to go to melbourne over altitude oh absolutely it's way more money <laughs> way more money and it's a month ahead of a week yeah yeah and yeah. there is there is like really cool people at melbourne who i like hanging out with mm-hmm. but what altitude festival does is take the festivals like melbourne like edinburgh fringe and curates a festival out of the best people from it yeah so you end up with like a you just trim, trim the fat. Yeah. A lot like what you did with your belly oh. when you were diving across. The, you tried to fail your belly down. I didn't, I, 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 it was one of those things, right? I did the right thing, but for the wrong reasons, mm. right? Like I cleaned up after my mess, which I think you should always do. It's something yeah. I regularly teach my son, which is it's absolutely fine. Clean up after my mess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's absolutely fine to make mistakes. It's absolutely fine to make a mess. It's like, we all have accidents, but... If you do any of those things, it is your responsibility to clean those things up and do your best to, mm. to right the wrongs that you might have done. Oops, I did a boo-boo. Yeah, but now, and now, there's no, you can't take back the boo-boo. But what you can do is you can fix it or you can, or you can do your best to try and make it better and mm-hmm. take ownership. So we're at the top of the fucking A-Horn in Altitude, which is one of the, the, the mountains in Meyerhofen. Which, and by the way, Meyerhofen, even if you're not going... If you're not going to Meyerhofen for the comedy festival and you're just looking for a great place to go skiing or snowboarding anytime during ski snowboard season, Meyerhofen's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It's so gorgeous yeah. and there's so many uh, things to do there. Good it, places to eat, good you know, places to drink. Yeah. Up and down the mountain. If you want to stay on the resort for a day, it's yeah. great. The, the best spa I've ever been to. Yeah. My mum my and dad. I don't, I don't mean the actual spa, which there is one, but yeah. the sauna. Yeah, my mum and dad were there for six days and they didn't scare snowboard once and they still had the time of their life. So mm. I, I highly recommend it in general. Um, so what up the A-Horn? I'm going to get like my fourth or fifth drink of the day before the clown race, right? And there's, I'm going to say like a tenth of the way down the mountain. Like literally you get off the big gondola, you can go down maybe 50, 100 feet and there's a bar that's sort of overlooking the the hill and it's got like a decking bit where you can be outside and that's where they're having the silent disco me and my friends were going to meet inside for some food before we went out to the silent disco or before we went to the clown race and right beside the door people have got their skis their boards everything all piled up and i'm like right gonna put it close here so there's no danger of it falling down the fucking mountain I put it there i've had two spliffs already i've had a couple of drinks already it's 11 a.m at altitude um i've had a day you still beat me at the clown race. Yeah, yeah, which we'll get Probably to. Probably because of that. 
I put my board up and it goes, bah, and then it goes, da, 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 just the domino fucking effect starts and it knocks everything off and it's ski, ski, ski. And now all the skis falling over. I'm going, ha, 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 fuck you, ha, ha. But also people are looking and I'm like, so I go to the thing. I'm like, oh God, what an asshole I am. Silly twat. I'm, I'm about to clean all this up. The end thing is a board. It's on the edge of the fucking building and it just goes, and starts going down the mountain. And that is not the end of the domino rally. No. Because here's if you have seen the game Mouse Trap, someone is diving into a pool because of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's if it was my rental board, I wouldn't have done anything. If it was my rental board, I would have watched it go down the mountain. Fingers crossed, it didn't wipe out a child. Well, unless well, I give French. French. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can injure French kids, and and morally, that's that's completely fine. I start sprinting down, but it, it, everyone, everyone had altitudes. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people are at the Altitude Comedy Festival around there. This could be one of the punters' boards. This could be one of my friends' boards. This could be Marcus Brigstock's kids' board. I don't want to fucking lose someone else's board. I start running down a mountain. I'm not faster than a snowboard going down a mountain. That's why I'm on snowboards going down mountains. Uh, otherwise, I'd just do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. there's no point in a snowboard. Just do, it on, do it on your bum. There's one opportunity to get this thing, and that's to use the height advantage that I have over the board and launch and grab the heel. That's the only way I'm going to fucking get it. And I do. I scrape all the skin off my belly. I smash my ribs real fucking bad. I rescue it, right? And I hear like a round of applause from like five or six people at the silent disco who'd all fucking see that. <laughs> to music. <laughs> we're like, hey. And, dun, just... dun, 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 and uh, it's very hard to accept uh, adoration when you're winded and crying. And it was your fault. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, I, I, but to this day, I still don't know whose board it was, whether it was a good thing to do, whether, mm. I mean, it was obviously a good thing to do. But like, but every day since then, I wish I hadn't done it. I, I wish I just let that board go off. Did it feel like true altruism? <laughs> you didn't, you no. never, you never got to see the. I don't know if it's true. Way, it doesn't count as altruism if you're just you you're it. just not being a dick. That's it. That's it. I'm just not be, a dick. Would have just fucking left uh-huh. it, right? And here's the thing: if I hadn't a got it, if I hadn't mm. a caught it, I would have waved all right to responsibility. I would have been like, "Oh man, I tried." Like I literally threw myself down the mountain after it. I'm not, it's now up to some skier down there to find out and, and, uh-huh. and get it back for you. I don't think it was altruism. It was trying to clean up my own fucking mess. If I could take it back and not do it, mm-hmm. I would. I can't, man, I sleep on my front like a normal person. I can't. Whoa. Yeah. Your front? Yeah. So when we had the conversation about the back sleepers, yeah. turned out that you were a front sleeper. Skydive. A side sleeper. Side? Uh-huh. Actually, I told you what I do. I do like a fucking one leg out, so it's kind of half twist. I sometimes do that. I sometimes do the. I always feel like the thing pregnant women do, which you put the pill between your legs like that. Mm, yeah. Give yourself some. Basically, you know the recovery position. Yeah. Uh huh. That's how you sleep, just yeah. in case. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just for a habit. <laughs> yeah. Been in it so many times. <laughs> yeah. Just put yourself in it, save the paramedic. <laughs> so anyway, you've been sleeping on your back. No, you no. Become a back sleeper. No, I couldn't do it. Pride came before fall. Well, no, I can't sleep on my back because. Uh, um, oh wow, we, we spoke about Cara being pregnant on the podcast already, haven't we? Did I'm not entirely sure, you know. Do we know this might be news to them. We don't have any attitude? I don't think so. Oh, well, she's mentioned it. It's on her socials, yeah, so it's oh, fucking yeah. out there. Uh-huh. And besides, a uh, four-month pregnant woman, um, I can't snore. I can't, I can't rob her of sleep that she's already lacking in. If I'm on my back... Mm-hmm. Also, I can't sleep on my back because I'm not. Do you snore? What do you mean you snore on your back? Yeah. Is that the rules? Yeah. Well, where, I don't know if it's rules for everyone. Where do you stand on this? This happened to me. I, wait, I'm going to... I can't stress enough how fucked I've been lately. Just I've been getting by and having a good time and like pr- like turning up professionally and turning up socially. But I am fucked because including the flights that I've done with you, I've had two additional ones. That mean I've had seven night flights in four weeks. Mm-hmm. That's like a night flight every four days. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean I'm sleeping through the day. I'm grabbing bits of sleep where I can. Right? I'm. I haven't had a great deal of sleep in the last four weeks. Mm-hmm. I'm fucked. Uh-oh. Considering I've been traveling, like there hasn't been a day in this whole like fucking whatever, f- like five six weeks where I haven't done a gig, had a travel day, or done a podcast, or all three of th- those three things. Every day has been a day's graft. Mm-hmm. Um, even though, like, people who actually graft, yeah. that's not graft. Are spitting like, at their fucking... spitting at their thing. But I've seen 
the, my mate who graft on the first day of their holiday and they're all fucked at the end of it. Mm. Every single day of my life is the first day of my holiday. Right. <laughs> and I am getting drunk just the same as you would. Um, so I am fucked. Not for really complaining about it. But putting it out there. Yeah. Putting it out there. I'm fucked from having a good time and from work being good. Mm-hmm. I'm grabbing sleep when I can. I'm doing a night flight through the night flight, right? We got where airport transfer was two in the morning. So we went straight from the night out. Airport transfer from To get home. back from Meyerhofen, <laughs> which is exactly the same as when we flew out there, right? And I'm on the flight. I fall asleep. I don't fall asleep too easily on flights, but I'm that fucked. And Natalie woke us up because I was snoring. And when I woke up, I snapped awake because I'm on a plane. I don't really know where I am. Mm-hmm. I've been on the drink that right. night. Right, and I wake up. I'm like, oh, she's like, you're snoring. I was like, that, that's it. <laughs> that's what you woke us up for. Hey. And she's like, yeah, other people can hear you. I was like, other people have headphones. The plane's making more noise than me. Mm, well, you know, I, mean, you, I mean, you don't know that. No, hold on. You know, when you, put, <laughs> you know the ambient noise of a plane? Aye. You block it out. Aye. It's not as annoying as snoring, Aye. but it's fucking noisy. Right? You know, if you put your uh, um, noise cancelling noise headphones on, you can still hear the aircraft through it, and then you knock them off, and it just goes, mm. and you can hear how loud it actually is. Like, that's loud. I'm just, like, got me own corner of the world over here. I'm having a snore. You've got headphones. The guy next to you's got headphones. Everybody's got headphones. There's a baby crying. There's a lot of noise. People are having a conversation. Fucking man, like, I'm not out of turn having a sleep. No, you're not out of turn having a I, I, I get what you're saying, but... Don't wake us up for it. Not if you love us. Well... Not if you know how I've lived for the last four weeks. <laughs> oh. I'm going to tell you, I nearly cried. <laughs> I, nearly, I nearly sobbed because I couldn't get back to sleep. I did, like I couldn't get where am I going to sleep next oh. in Shiphall when I'm running through the airport because the connection's 45 minutes and it's fucking Shiphall oh yeah aye, right aye. my bags didn't turn up of course I knew don't. they weren't going to turn up why would they turn up the connection meant there's no baggage handlers running through the airport like I am no, for, no. with my bag no. right so I know I'm going home to no bags <sighs> at least I could have some sleep you know what I would have been happier if I was in the middle of a nice delicious meal that I'd ordered <laughs> just, and she just <laughs> scraped it into the bin <laughs> Because then I'll get another meal in a couple of hours. Uh, I'll just whenever I next to see food, I'll be able to eat again. She's like, oh, I don't like the smell of that, and scrape it at the bin. I would be like, ah, oh, fair fucks. I had to say it if I right because I've got we've got like two days before. I feel like I'm not talking to you for those two days. It was. <laughs> I, was in the, I was in the car. I was knackered because my bag didn't turn up. Right, it, it arrived just an hour before I left. Mm-hmm. And I was, just, I was just, like, I was close to quit. And I just turned around Natalie in the, in the car and I was like, look, I don't care what the situation is. Mm. We're two days at home. Never wake us up. If I fall asleep on the couch and dinner's ready, don't, like, just don't, oh, like, yeah, don't yeah. wake us up. Like, if I, like, when I sleep, that's when I sleep because I need to be back over five weeks on the road ahead of us. Oh, yeah. And uh, bless her, she slept in a different bed of us last night. <laughs> 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 Oh. She went to the room. Oh, I mean, you got what you asked for, but not what you wanted. <laughs> <That's> fucking mint. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, I slept for 12 hours straight. Aye. 12 straight hours. Didn't yeah. wake up. Peggy chose me. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't care about the snoring. Aye. Did she wake up? Hmm? The dog wake up? There was one point where she like climbed in with us. Like she got off from like, she had, sleeps in the nook of me legs. Like, you know, if I, I sleep like um, I'm about to do the karate kick. Kick. No. You know I seen Karate Kick? You know when he like raises one leg? Karate Kick? And, oh, I, I know the reference, but not. Crane I've Kick. Never, I've never seen so Karate I, Kick. So I, I sleep with my legs in Crane Kick position. This episode is sponsored by Thistle Cross Cider. Uh, the best Scottish cider. They don't pay us to say that. Uh, if you want to get a 10% discount on any order of Thistle Cross Cider, you can go to thistlecrosscider.co.uk and you use the promo code Thistle Sloss. That's right. It is an extra excellent pun. Thistle Sloss April. Thistley Sloss April will get you a 10% discount uh, to any orders. It's obviously, unfortunately, only now in the UK, but we're hoping with our world reach, we'll allow this alcohol company to expand. And I, I personally recommend the Whiskey Cask one. It's the f- incredible. It's unbelievable. It's award-winning. We're proud to be associated. And if and when you do buy it, uh, please do tag us in uh, the, uh, with your order, having a couple of drinking responsibly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as always, thank you for the support. Karate Kid's one of those movies where well, I, I don't need to watch it Mm-mm. to know that it's shit and not aged well. 
It would have no nostalgia value for you. Yeah, so therefore it's shit. You need to have watched it as a child so you could enjoy it again as an adult. Yeah, I reckon. yeah. There's no, there's no need for a thirty. I can't watch it. watch it for, for the first time and be like, oh, every one of my friends who likes this movie because they're older than me is a fucking dweeb because this objectively sucks mm. because everything's better now. It's so predictable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I can't watch Karate Kid now because I don't want to face the the fact that Mr Miyagi is probably my age. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but okay. no, she, she sleeps. Whoops, she sleeps in the nook of me leg. Like she, mm. where, wherever I'm sleeping, she'll like sometimes find a part of me that she can use as a basket. But then every now and again, she comes to the top of the bed and climbs up into the duvet and then climbs back up. Mm. So your head's at the same height. Um, and I kind of stirred when that happened and then fell straight back asleep again. You didn't bite her head off. <laughs> no, she had grace about it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bite a head off, I was just in a pure huff. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking devastating. I, was like, I don't know how she could do that to me. Uh, I, well, I, might... I couldn't bring myself to do that to her. Even though she'd want us to, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, that's uh, the she'd difference. be like, oh my God, I was snoring, that's so embarrassing. Yeah. Well, because here's the thing about if we, if, what we want to talk about, fucking plain etiquette and the rules of it. Uh, so on, on my flight out to altitude... Right, I was out later than everyone else because I want to be out later than everyone else because, again, I've had no time at home. You actually had some um, self-love when mm. it came to your time at home. and Yeah, and I was, like, I was like, man, I love altitude. I'm not going to sleep for a week. I'm going to drink too much, and I'm not doing that to myself. And I, I, I want to spend time at home with my pregnant wife and my son. Uh, so I flew out on the, the Monday, and I get on the plane, and I'm sat in economy, and that's fine. And... I sit down and this guy who's got his baseball cap on and I go, that's the gay from the gay episode of Last of Us that's not a compliment. Not, Ma- Ron, not Ron Swanson. No, Murray Bartlett is apparently his name. He was also the uh, the um, hotel manager in first season of White Lotus, right? And I'm I'm convinced it's him. But the second I see him, I'm like 60% certain that's him. Mind you, he threw to Munich, weird flight, fair enough. Okay, grand. And he's got his baseball cap on, and that means he's in disguise. And I, anytime he's ordering something from the the people in the aisle, the air stewards, I'm trying to catch his. I'm trying to do it very subtly be like, "How famous do you think he is?" Because I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recognize him. Oh, I, I think I've seen one thing that he's in. He's newly famous. Uh, White Lotus is Emmy winning. I'm almost certain that he was, uh-huh. if not a winner. La- Last of Us was massive, but uh, he wasn't. And, but he, also he was in e- one episode. Yeah, but that episode was a, an, an unbelievably famous episode because the uh-huh. conservatives hated it because they were told to hate it because mm. you right. know, they don't have any policies, so they just need to be outraged by yeah. gays existing in a <laughs> fucking apocalyptic world. So he had a lot of media swelling around him during yeah. that time. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Um, so he's... And I'm all I all I want to do, all I want to do is go, hey man, that episode of Last of Us is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. I've watched it three times. I've cried all three times. I think you're a phenomenal actor. Um, that's it. I don't want a photo. So he's just like acting being gay and you're just really being gay. <laughs> I think he's gay I think he's gay IRL. Is he? Yeah. Otherwise he let me is suck Nick, him off for no reason. <laughs> is Nick Offerman of gay as well? No, he's married to fucking uh, Janet from Will and Grace. Okay. Hi. She's very funny. She's very funny. I've never seen that. Oh, she's an unbelievably good. Co- oh, wait, hold on. You know his mental ex-wife in... Um, in Parks and Rec. That's his wife. Oh, right, okay. That's his real yeah, life wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Her. Like, uh, they're... Yeah, she's a... Un- I wish I remembered her name. I'm a bad person for not. She's an unbelievably good comic actor. I think Money Bartlett is gay in real life. I could be wrong, but almost certain. Um, all I want to do is just tell him how, how great a thing he is. He's got his hat on, he's got his headphones on, and I'm like, all right, from a Z-list celebrity to a B-list celebrity, I don't know what that means. It's not, he's on a flight. He's made it. He, I <laughs> yeah, we're both on an economy. We don't want to get spotted. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there is one bit, right, where the guy in front of me, it's a two-hour flight from London to Munich. Guy in front of me reclines his chair, and I do what I always do, and I just went, no. You do not get to recline chairs on no. two-hour flights. Mm-hmm. Anything under four hours, it's a straight... And I'll argue with you the whole flight. You're not reclining. Two inches backwards doesn't make fucking... If you're that tired, you can sleep with uh, the extra two inches, right? Yeah, I'll put it's, it out there. I was asleep without reclining my yeah, chair. You're not tired enough. Un- 
Or sure. long haul flights? Absolutely. It is unforgivable and mm. I will not allow it to happen. You do not get to recline your fucking seat on anything less than four hours. Shut the fuck up or pay for premium economy. Right. This is this is what you should be able to do if somebody puts a seat back. You're just going, oh, yeah, pass it on. We're all going to have to put our seats back two inches mm. because of this dickhead in front of me. So you're just passive aggressive. They can hear you. Just going, right, we're all day at Domino's and we're going to get woken up before uh, the fucking flight lands to put our seats forward uh, and lose that 15 minutes of sleep that we could have had if this dickhead uh, wasn't dickhead Domino's, all good. Uh, you better did this make a difference to your life? Yeah, fuck. So, no, no, man, I'll deny it. I'll deny it all the time. Get the air steward. I'll have, a fu- I'll have an argument with everyone. You do not get to recline a seat on anything mm. less than fucking four hours. So, guy reclines his seat. I went, nope, pushed it forward. The guy turns it and I went, no, it's not happening. Mm-hmm. No, I've got a drink here. It's two hours. No. And the guy's like, no, and he turns back around, right? Money looks over, sees me. And so, and I'm like, first time I make eye contact with him. And he sort of goes, and I'm like, fuck, oh, that's it, that's it, that's better. Oh, that's better you than a vote. move. That's better than a fucking vote. That's amazing. That's better. And I'm sitting there, drinking my gin and tonic, being like, fuck yes. I made someone I greatly respect, respect me, right? And I turned around. The cunt reclined his seat. Did he? <laughs> he fucking did. And not even to sleep, to meditate. He had his fucking headphones in and he had meditated. And there's definitely someone behind him. A hundred percent. Which I have way more respect for, right? For him to just be like, nice move. Let's see if this guy's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. All right, so uh, he gets off the plane. I'm like, don't bother him. Don't bother him. Just that he's, he's, he's listening to meditation. He's being calm. It's just not a day for him to be fucking interrupted. Uh, we're standing beside each other at the luggage carousel. I'm like, just, 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 man, just, just be, just be next to him and just accept it. He gets his bag, go outside. Friend Tom's picking us up, pick me up, and I'm like, fucking, it's the guy from fucking Last of Us. And he goes, oh my god, so it fucking is. And we both look over, beside, stood beside, waiting for a taxi. Alexis from Shit's Creek. Amazing. Annie Murphy. Annie Murphy. Yeah. Oh man! And first of all, I'm, while talking about phenomenal comedic actors, she's absolutely up there. She so, was so good in that Black Mirror episode as well, I, where it was like layered. Yeah, yeah, and gorgeous to boot. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, what were they? What are they doing? Are they? Are they? Are they, are they just friends? They're working on something. You got to be. Uh huh. But I feel like she's someone that would have like a uh, would have a gay best friend. I know, but like, are they going to Germany together? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, that's what, that's what, that, that was the that was the exact epiphany I had when I was asking. You. Uh, like that's Berlin, they, Berlin would have been better. Um, mm. So flying into Munich, the, I mean, uh, the probably did lots of stuff shot in Germany. Heaps, I imagine, absolutely yeah. fucking heaps. It's like every everything in Germany works. But, it would make sense that. But being flown over something in the economy that does suggest. But, it's just that, but then again, that it, like you went out in economy because it was like passion thing. You were going to a festival, yeah. That like were trying to make their budget so that they could afford you and yeah, Dara and yeah, Paul Smith yeah, yeah, yeah. and everybody else that was going and the flights and the ski high and all that. So the, the oh, t- also uh, by the way, for the record, I will never fly business when it's my money. Yeah, uh-huh. so like it could be a thing that. They're working on that the budgets they can't just fucking eat into the budget for all of these things that's fair um and he just went well fuck it, it's two hours i just what even is what even is first class on these flights other than you're sitting there on the front and you get like a curtain to block off the pros yeah i mean i, I think there's want, not a great deal of difference yeah i didn't want to say this in all of our india flights but all of our internal india flights there was no reason for any of those to be business i'm like i'm just closer to the front we'll get off the, f- the flight earlier yeah yeah so it was and the the lounges fuck the indian lounges like oh Kolkata like, airport just dry to dry, the- dry lounge celibate prostitute Mm. What's it for? Well, no, to be <laughs> that's fair, not, that didn't mean it. <laughs> like, what's the lounge for? It's because it was the start of fucking Ramadan. But also, you don't. You're an international airport. Uh, you're a, if it was a domestic airport, domestic terminal, you're absolutely allowed to be like, all right, fucking. Mm. Some of us are Muslims here. An international airport. Shove your beliefs can, can I- up your hoop and get me a double fucking whiskey but they wouldn't even serve us fucking booze on the plane until we took off they're like we can't do it until the plane's oh, out yeah. Ugh. Ugh. see my beliefs why do they not get tolerated 
Watch I believe it's failure drink Aye. during Ramadan. I need during Ramadan. Aye. I believe that if you cut off your curly sideboards, you'd look better. Aye. I've got these beliefs that contradict other people's beliefs. Yeah. <laughs> And we can all live together in harmony. It's yeah. fine. Just you, just just but, you don't drink any. Uh-huh. <laughs> you believe in the afterlife. That's why you're not drinking right now, uh-huh. right? Because you're like, you know what? I got this forever. Why would I need to be drunk? I'm an atheist, baby. I'm doing half of this uh, half cut. Aye, I'll have alcohol. I'll yeah. have beef burgers. I'll have yeah. bacon sandwiches. I believe that when my I uh, die, and my wife dies, and my parents die, and you die, and my son, I'm never going to see any of them again. Mm-hmm. Never going to see. That makes me sad every day. Drink, baby. Drink. I drink between the moments before, you know, and also transit, man. Mm-hmm. Like, nothing makes layovers and delay. Nothing makes me more tolerable. I'll tell you what, had I been drunk in the Munich flight, probably would have let, like, probably would have let that guy recline. <laughs> <laughs> probably would have introduced myself to that guy, uh, right. that actor. Be like, hey, how you doing? I almost want a fucking wanker. Oh, so just quickly, uh, reclining your seat on an airline. Uh, for, for on less than a three hour flight is three points on your license uh-huh. here's another one and uh, it's very important if you get into a car and do not immediately put your seatbelt on three points oh yeah the beeping oh my god first, first of all first of all we're all adults none of us are teenagers anymore so nobody finds not putting seatbelts on cool so just grow up we're not trying to impress impress our 12 year old fucking date on the way to the cinema while our dad drives us in a fucking peugeot and we're like i'm a hard man and you gotta wait for your dad to be like put your seatbelt on you're like oh whatever it's about it's about as cool as riding your bike with no handlebars yeah just like doing it doing it as like a 30 year old really lame put your fucking seatbelt on immediately and do not let everyone else in the car who's sensible and doesn't take weird gratification from that happens to listen to the beep 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 and then it escalates in my car it adds the, there's the beep beep and then there's like a woo 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 gets added to it like it, it cranks up the hostility on the seatbelt beep yeah. and sometimes I still hear people like flapping around in the back like looking for it and I'm like the belt, the belt's there, and the thing's there. Like every car, I put a uh, man. Anyone, anyone in my digging around looking for it for eat. just. Uh, it should just be such second nature to whap your belt in, oh, unless like unless you know when you're wedged up next to each other uh, and you're like, oh, sorry about your bum, not uh, touching you up here uh, and all that. There's a bit of that, but you can absolutely do that before you pull away. Uh, oh man, like I've got the key in the ignition. Even, and fucking started the car. And, even my own wife, right? If we're late for something, which often happens when you have a child in your life and you're trying to get somewhere, even if we're late for something, right? We rush in the car. If I pull out the driveway and her seatbelt's on, on and I hear the beep. I will pull over and fucking stare at her. She's like, what are you doing? We're already late. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Do you know what doesn't make being late better? Constant fucking beeping. Mm-hmm. A fucking, a background countdown. Put your seatbelt on and we can drive in fucking silent mm-hmm. treatment, which I've rightfully earned by delaying as an extra. And by we, I mean you. You've delayed us 30 <laughs> seconds. Um, I'll, oh. I'll always, this is like a dad joke that I've cracked a million times. I'll always tell people to lift their bum off the seat. Like, is it, you couldn't lift your weight off the seat, could you? There's a little handle by the door if you just pull your handle up and lift your uh, bum yeah. off the seat. Just stops that noise. It's the only it's way, the, I, it's the only anyway, way I know how to get that noise to stop. I, I, I think of. It's the only, it's the, oh. And they're like, oh, fuck, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, this is a weird connection, but bear with me. Back when Pokemon Go was good, right? Mm. Back in the early days, before we realised that it wasn't. Vegas 2016? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, when right. you and Matty were cutting around Vegas looking for Pokemon. Yep, yep, yeah. And we found some really good ones. <laughs> uh, there was a feature if you were in somebody's car and you were playing Pokemon Go and you were driving around just catching things, they'd be like, hey man, we're a GPS system and you're going 45 miles an hour. Please don't drive your car while playing Pokemon Go and you can have a I'm the passenger in the car button. All cars need to, when it goes beep, 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 seatbelt going, it's luggage, it's shopping, it's something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beep, 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 it's shopping, man. I just, it's a, it's a fucking nappy bag. I got the, my son's sleeping, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut, <laughs> shut the fuck up, man. Yeah, it's it's so just weird. a nappy bag. There's not enough room in the well because there's a birthday cake down there because I'm on my way to a fucking party. It's just luggage you bastard um we had one that was the other way around where brucey who's a big lad was in the car and i was like eh why is that not beeping yeah i'm going to belt on normally beeps and he was like must think i'm a wardrobe or something <laughs> 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 you think i'm a bit of furniture that you're moving around 
Um, so you had you had your little injury mm. um, in altitude, and on the final day of the festival, I nearly had one too. In fact, um, I kind of did. It, I, I, I set I set fire to me bum, Daniel. Oh, I saw this video. But it wasn't me bum that got injured. The no. toilet roll never reached my bum. No, it burned all of the hair off the back of my calf, and you could smell it like backstage. <laughs> It turns out there's a technique to Andy Smart's party trick. Well, you're going to have to give the only person. way more. Right, I'm going to give you the context. Good friend of ours. I say a good friend of ours, right? This is mad because I don't have Andy Smart's number. Not that it would be any use now. Aye. But I hang around with Andy Smart somewhere between three and six times a year. Yeah. And on them three to six times, it's over the course of a good week or a month. And it's intense. And we see each other fucking everywhere. And we're party hard. So not one of them relationships that you're constantly watering in WhatsApp groups. But they're one of them relationships where you just trust they're going to be there. And all of a sudden he's not there anymore. Mm. He died of he died of lifestyle abuse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I always found to be. And too soon too after he got his teeth done. Oh man, <laughs> that that gorgeous! They couldn't the, get knocked over after a haircut. There. <laughs> Andy Smart was the one of the friendliest, the smiliest people in the world. The best man he was just always vibrant, so happy and so joyous. And even he, well, he, he he knew this. He had fucking awful teeth. He had those old school like alcoholic up and smoking since I was thirteen. Teeth where like the top bits in the gums were thinner receding, than the yeah. yeah receding sort of thing. But and you always saw them because he was he was never not smiling and he was never not fucking laughing, right? And it was just one of the things that made him like just a, a joy to fucking be around. And then eventually one day he went, you know what? Fuck it. Like I'm getting them done, and he did and it just i mean not that he needed it but just it made his already contagious smile fucking you know uh, big Aaron White yeah, yeah, right now. yeah yeah and you didn't go oh yeah i forgot you had fucking those things he just and he had his hair cut like he got really fucking handsome in like his last <laughs> yeah, i guess he had long he kind of long like scraggly head yeah, and, then he, and then he just went like, when we saw him in Galway, he'd had his teeth done his hair was nice and all that and i was like <laughs> fucking andy smart yeah, yeah. Uh, just too beautiful for, for this world in the end. So, so he, he, um, like, oh, we had this running joke where every time I was saw him, I'd be like, oh, thank God, you're still alive. That means I've got time. That means I'm going to be all right. Oh, Me yeah. and Daniel and Mark Nelson, like the fucking lads that are right behind you by half a generation. Yeah. We're going to be fine. And he was like, yep, I'm your canary down the main. When, when you go, when I go, you've got to start to worry. That's only funny if you don't die. Yeah. I, I <laughs> it's not a funny joke if you then, like, the canary down the mail dies and also, like, oh, fuck, gas. <laughs> we <With> gas. <laughs> We're all going to die. Um, so I get up and Is that why they do the canary down the mail? The canary is going to die before people do oh, it. I thought they... it was just for company. <laughs> just for government secrets. <laughs> Canary, stop singing, man. Better run. Um, so I got up, and I'm just cracking a couple of jokes. I tell that little story. I talk about um, anybody who's been to the festival before. You'll know that Andy Smart is always on the app risky doing the improv, and anybody, everybody this year found out that he did all the heavy lifting. <laughs> just like jokes, you know, trying to make light. Oh, one of one of the jokes to make light was, and he'd come to every single show at the festivals, and he'd always tell the younger comedians that. He thinks comedy's in safe hands. And then Elliot Steele and Ryan Collins started coming to the festivals and he just stopped saying it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just cracking little jokes, right. trying to make light. And I'm like putting fit and tribute to Andy Smart. I'm going to try and do his party trick that he does every year. At every year at Altitude Festival, the last, the last gig of the festival is called the Clown Hole. And every comedian that wants to gets up and does five minutes of whatever the fuck. Like we've gotten up before and done your dad jokes from the podcast and everybody fucks around. If you've got a little bit of material left, you may do that. Or you may, uh, like Paul and Laurie Smith went up and uh, like started telling them reasons why they loved each other, but everything was passive aggressive. Mm. It was really funny. So everybody just does something a little bit different. And, uh, me and Amy, or Sister Mary Lou from, oh my God, it's the church. Amy Beesting. Amy Beesting got up and we stood on crates because he is taller than us. Was. Was. We made a few. He's six foot, now he's six foot under. <laughs> <laughs> he just says new haircut. <laughs> yeah, well, he made a fuse out of toilet roll and he wedged, then it bit up his ass, 
and the other bit touching the ground. He set on fire and he was only allowed to p- pull the fuse out of his bum once he downed his pint. Mm-hmm. So we get on the things, Emmanuel <laughs> put uh, put the toilet roll up my ass mm-hmm. and then Kate done Amy's and then they brought each a pint. Well, they brought Amy a pint and they brought me a pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> I set up, it was rigged. The game was rigged all along. I was set up to fail. Aye. And uh, I'm like down in this picture. Amy just emptied her paint over her tits, took the fuse out of her ass. The tribute's just about... Yeah, of course. ...about doing the thing. But I was like, I'm actually going to give this a go. Yeah. You know what? When you're doing these party tricks, you think, wait, hey, nothing can go wrong. Otherwise, they just wouldn't let us do it. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you've not been down, Chance. Health and safety. <laughs> I don't think there's health and safety in venues and places like that, right? I've actually also, could- I don't know. I don't know if you know this, but we made pretty fucking sure that the Austrians stopped acting like Nazis about things. So, what Coppinger told us after the fact is that I'm pretty sure Andy Smart used to like put, point his bum out and like kind of put a 45 degree arch really down the paint so that his bum made a clear run to the floor. I just let mine just come up the back of my legs mm. and I just felt the back of my legs going on fire and I fucking poured the picture out while they were like <laughs> doing me arse and over the fire and the fire's still on the floor and I'm jumping around got a sock on my cock back of my legs are black off the leg hairs you fucking stench your leg hair um, so I, anyway I'm better I, I guess Andy Smart had done it once or twice before he got it right uh, <laughs> that's yeah. what I'm saying but I was also nearly cremated in tribute to Andy Smart <laughs> We were we were backstage and I think it was like the first or the second day at the <laughs> the late show and I was with Paul and Laurie and Ian Coppinger and uh Keris and Elms and uh Coppinger ends up telling this really beautiful story just about the uh, Andy Smart charity gig that they'd mm-hmm. done recently just to raise money for I don't know if it was his family or a charity that he was he bows down in the name of <laughs> Andy Smart. He tells this story. It's nice, we all fucking laugh. We all take a moment to sort of reflect. Two seconds, three seconds pass. And I just went, charity gig for Andy Smart. Why, what's wrong with him? <laughs> and Paul Smith and <laughs> Snelps went, no. Oh, no. About to break it there. <laughs> they thought they were about to break the news to you that he died. Fucking Ian Coppinger was killing himself. And when I told Frosty about it, he was for And uh, Steve. It was so funny when they were asking that, uh, Ian Coppinger to do the fuse. Because uh, he was like... like that. I'm three foot. <laughs> I'm so short. He's such a short man. Because mm. he, he would, I think Cottinger would be considered a dwarf if his head was a bit bigger. Yeah, he's a short man. Yeah. Uh, Talking funny fucker though. He tells a story about when uh, him and Andy Smart both hid waiting to jump out on each other <laughs> and f- thinking that the other one was coming. But they were both hiding, waiting to jump out of each other for uncomfortably long, and then one of them made a noise. They both jumped out, and they both got a fright. <laughs> Andy Smart would have loved Alan Pardew. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what about f- <laughs> Alan? Alan Pardew is going to be on the special when it's released soon. Yeah, just let them know. I think I, I've already mentioned it on the last episode, but to tell people uh, again. Yeah. Well, last episode, the, the last episode he was on it. This is going to come out before the episode with Alan Pardew on. Right. So it's like I'm teasing, I'm letting people know that that's happening. Because that's ready when it's ready. This will be out tomorrow. What well, lovely, humble and funny man he was. He was great, wasn't he? Aye. Uh-huh. I know there's a, there's a bit of a dark cloud when he came into Newcastle United. And a bit of a dark cloud when he left. But he gave us a fantastic <laughs> season. And uh, after meeting him, lovely guy. Aye. Yeah, I just really good. can't pull off those sunglasses though. But yeah, uh, he was he wasn't sure how I was going to be with him when I was Jordy because mm. like I think he's like a lot of managers are a little bit like uh, unless you've had like a, a spell where you're a hero like an Alex Ferguson or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's normally a bit of a like reason why you left. Mm. Oh, I think it's so, jo- George Burley. Let me just double check, <laughs> make sure I've got that fucking uh, name right. I would. I would absolutely chin. Uh, Who? George Barley. Oh, there's the fuck. Was he manager of Scotland or something? He's the one that played the famous 4 6 0 formation in a must win game for us. Okay. <laughs> I fucking despise. He could come on this podcast, be the funniest guest we'd ever had, mm. and I'd still chip him. Yeah. 
hundred percent. How fucking dare you? I must win game four six zero. Hey man, we've all had a bad gig. <laughs> nah. Cut him some slack. Uh, absolutely, I'll, I'll fucking cut it from his neck. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but he he was great. He came to every single show, man. Mm. It was funny when I was when I was uh, driving in there. I was listening to uh, Spurs versus Nottingham Forest, and uh, they mentioned at halftime that he was coming out to do the punditry after the thing. And I was like, he's straight he's straight back to the mm. talk sport. I wonder if he mentions it. I wonder <laughs> if Slosson Humphreys on the road gets a shout out. He he was on that podcast with the confidence of a man that thought nobody's going to listen to this. Yeah, and he was one hundred percent correct. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know if you've uh, heard much about the, the Scottish hate laws, hate speech laws that have come into play since the 1st of April. Oh, on April Fool's Day. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I mean, I, I've not done too much research on it, but you know when you're just... The problem with the ongoing culture war and the fact that like 99% of news organizations have just picked a side and that's what they're going to, they're going to take their stance. They're going to talk about their own fucking stance. Um, and everyone, you, I mean, you can predict what both Owen Jones thinks about something and yeah, Tucker Rob Carlson Morgan thinks. Does. Yeah. yeah, just instantly based on, all right, I know nobody actually has yeah. their own opinions. You've anymore. showed us the work and your thought process. We know which side you're on. Well, and also, you're all, you're all, your they're, all, they're, all, they're all shells. Mm -hmm. They're all, even fucking Owen Jones, you're a shell. Mm -hmm. you, you make money from being left wing now. Mm -hmm. So it's within your interest and I thought to he just had, be... I thought he had quite a strong start into the world as well. Did he read uh, yeah, the, my, Chav, it, the demonization of the working class? No. It was actually a fucking really good book. Yeah. I'm sure that was him. I mean, when he was younger. Um, but now he just knows what sells and leans into it. Yeah, right? yeah. Just where it's, the wind blows. Yeah, and him. It's, yeah and it's just yeah. stop being. So, like, I heard so much about the Scottish hate speech laws coming into play because a bunch of Scottish comedians, pardon me, were talking about it. But then, like, I was reading an article today and it, just, <laughs> it was just going, you know, people like Joe Rogan have already come out against it. So, even I'm guilty of it. I'm like, oh, so I'm for it then. Yeah. Like, like that's just something I if Joe Rogan who does less research than uh -huh. I do on everything which is now the situation you find yourself in that is like you, if you might want to agree with someone that's correct in a certain thing but you hate them so much that you just want to be contrary yeah well no I try my best not to be I try to be like okay like but first of all, whenever you read anything, go, right, what source is this from? Mm. Is it a right-wing or a left-wing thing? And if right. it's from a right-wing thing, still read the fucking article. Yeah. But just make sure that you Google the same story and find a left-wing publisher or a central one and then get, like, the... F it's your job to paint the whole picture for yourself now. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that is to read the same news story from three separate sources. That's right. how I try to... And then don't set yourself up in a fight when you're discussing it with people because you've chose your stance because it's part of the fucking... Yeah. Yeah, the, like, yeah. Like, Owen Jones, you know, like anybody that like gets fought, like fed their narrative, yeah, and then gets mad when you don't agree with it. You're like, I don't believe you've even read past the the heading, yeah, of the clickbait. So here's here's the problem I have with the, the Scottish hate speech laws. Everyone I hate and everyone I disagree with thinks they're awful, and some very far right wing group has since the thing came into play just started up a wee telegram group and it's just gone just phone police scotland every five minutes and report hate crimes that aren't hate crimes just it's such a stupid law it's such a violation of freedom of speech that what now here's why they're being right wing about it they're going on the, the scottish police website and they're being like you know they'll find the statistics that show that and I'm, this one is being pulled out of my arse because I can't remember the statistic. Don't fucking quote me on this. This is I think, purely... Yeah, get your news from the news. Not yeah, yeah. But there's one bit where it's uh, like... No, don't. <laughs> on, on the Police Scotland website, it says something like, oh, you know, 40 to 50% of domestic abuse in Scotland is perpetuated by white men between the ages of 18 and 36, right? This far right wing groups be like, oh, that's hate speech. That's going after straight white men. So let's report police Scotland for that and just waste police resources because about this really awful, stupid hate, hate crime law. And as much as I'm sitting there going, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm, I'm center left. I fucking hate everyone. This article is quoting who's against this fucking thing. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I think I'm okay with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I like because here's the thing. Like I, I I think it's important to stamp out fucking 
hate speech, but like by the sense of the thing, the law is so broad. What they were trying to do is... It's you so got, funny if just one day there's just pictures of you getting handcuffed and put into the police van because of the stuff he said about left-handed people. Mm. Oh, here's the thing. <laughs> hate speech laws need to be in place, I believe, for... Twitter doesn't sort itself out. Facebook doesn't sort itself out. All of the racists that were on in, uh, Twitter and are bored are now just on Instagram. That's why tw Instagram's suddenly becoming very toxic and therefore very funny. Um, th I do think it's... I think there needs to be really harsh consequences for knowingly and willingly spreading disinformation online mm -hmm. because I think it's... The, one of the biggest threats to democracy right. in the modern world. It's just the fact that people are allowed to... Something bad happens. The Baltimore Bridge crash, right? Mm -hmm. Baltimore Bridge crash happened. Nobody knew what happened. And people were like, it's ISIS. It's the left. It's yeah. this. It's Hamas. It's fucking... It's, it's, it's Joe Biden doing it to stop this poor. And it's blah, blah, blah. All this stuff. To, like, all these conspiracy theories. These people just get to spout shit, which there's no evidence of. What there is evidence of is... The fact that five minutes before it hit the bridge, the person driving the boat went, Mayday, Mayday, the boat's fucked. We're about to hit the fucking bridge. And that's why zero cars were on the fucking boat. Well, not zero, but like mm -hmm. very few things actually happened. And also if it was a terrorist attack, it would have happened at fucking 12 midday and nothing would have happened. But all these people who just spread this fucking shit, which... People will read a headline about something fucking awful and never update their opinion afterwards. These people who knowingly and willingly put this information out, I think there absolutely should be consequences mm. for. What's his face got consequences, didn't he? Eventually, uh, Alex Jones, about his... Um, Consequ I mean, he's not had to fucking pay for any of them. Has he not? He's not paid a single fucking I thought, penny. I thought he got done for... Oh, he did. Uh, for causing... Well, spreading hate speed about, about the families Sandy of the Hook. victims Sandy of Sandy Hook. Hook yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was... Uh, I think his his bill was something close to 100 million, but he's not paid a fucking penny. Oh, really? No, he's... How do you not... How, how is that? Have How you... is that when, like, we cannot get away with not paying a parking ticket? Because he is a... Millionaire. So, and he just doesn't pay it out of that? Yep. Oh, he's paid it. it no, 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 he's not paid it. Oh, he's just managed to get lawyers to find loopholes to worm his way out of it. Ugh. Mm -hmm. So it just cost him a fraction of that on lawyers. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. So, like, here's the thing. Like, I, the, I game's, think, the game's rigged. <laughs> like, I, I, I think there needs to be absolutely consequences for saying vile and hateful things in public to... to, to 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 inspire hatred because here's the thing you, you're allowed to not have hate speech laws if education is free and excellent right mm. you don't have to go out and preach whatever evil you want if the average person is educated to such a degree that they've been trained to spot misinformation critical thinking critical thinking all this yeah. stuff but we're not so therefore you don't really like like there has there has to be some sort of consequences. And also hate speech isn't comedy and it's not art. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, and also I think most of the time we are good at telling what people's actual intent is. Like, you know, I know the difference between somebody, a, a poor, poor example that I'm pulling out my arse. When Kanye West wore the White Lives Matter, or, or I think I'm with White Lives Matter or All Lives Matter stuff, and he wore a red MAGA fucking hat, like, I will agree that that was art. Misguided art, mm -hmm. stupid art, done by a clinically stupid man. Aye. Right? And not well. No, yeah. But it's art. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with it. it I, I, I think it missed the mark. But stinky, stinky art, still fucking art. There's a difference between that and somebody writing the N-word 4,000 times on a wall and being mm -hmm. like, it's art. So it's not hate speech, it's art. We're like, motherfucker, I know what you're doing. I know what yeah. you're doing. Uh -huh. I'm not an idiot. I do wish there was more you know, of that. You know what I could never get used to? The ambient swastikas in India. Right? Because, <laughs> because they had it first mm. and they're not letting go of it. And I guess they were too far from the action to have let it get into that social conscience as much as it has ours. But uh, they, the peace sign, right? I don't know if it's a peace sign, but it's a, it's a religious symbol of sorts. It's a religious symbol. And it, like... I don't care what people say it was the correct way for the... I was looking at them going, nah, that's the way of the swastika. You mm. know how they're saying if it's the other way? No, oh, you know, it's the... Yeah, it's It that. was the correct... It yeah. was the... That's the correct way. The yeah. way 
that you would do with swastika. Mind you, like the Nazis so, turned that peace sign into the swastika sign. They also, like, this, this is the thing, the dumbest <laughs> Americans in the world will fucking tell you, but like, the Nazis were a socialist party. You go, no, no. The Nazis called themselves socialists. <laughs> There's a difference between being something uh, and saying you uh -huh, are yeah. something. Uh, that's I've I've had that thrown in my face where I was talking about socialism and they're like Putin's a socialist and they're like, like no, oh come on man no he's not shut up shut up, shut up man just, all right right so yeah, the one, so the one bit the one bit of propaganda you do believe is the bit where he's like um well, I'm not a communist well, he says <laughs> he says he's a communist <laughs> well, he's a communist but um so what what thing would you love like if the, you, if there's an atrocity which we don't want to happen, mm. but if the atrocity did happen, what thing would you like to take with them to take with it? Like you know, if you know, like if oh. Kim Jong Un pressed the button wearing a onesie, <laughs> Crocs on, oh, yeah, and then, yeah. North Koreans all start wearing Crocs. If every bomb <laughs> dropped on Gaza said "Live, Laugh, Love," <laughs> <laughs> and "Live, Laugh, Love" just become that. Uh, right. Yeah, that's okay. What, 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 yeah, what do I fucking? What would you like to be seen taken oh, out by way of oh, atrocity? I'll, I'll, I'll tell, I'll tell you what. Hashtag be kind. <laughs> Hashtag be kind. I want to be to become the like the they have the same gravitas as final solution. Absolutely, fucking lovely. man. I, and I've I've griped about this fucking before. You only ever see. Please be kind to our staff posters in places they know they're where they over. know the staff are awful at their fucking jobs. Yeah, in, in, I've in, never been in a Michelin star restaurant nah. where they're like, please be kind to our staff. Well, I'm, I'm going to be because they're super polite and they're very good at what they do. It's always the train line. It's always it's some, a, somewhere they're shortchanging a customer. Yeah, yeah. Or, or awful staff. Mm -hmm. Schiphol Airport is covered covered with please be kind to our staff because none of them can do their fucking jobs mm, yeah i tell you what though the last couple of times in the last week that i went through they definitely had a good system for how shit they are yeah they're like oh where's shit these queues are bananas but if you are about to miss your flight we've got a queue for you and yeah yeah um, i'm gonna miss my flight ticket gets you a fast track queue now which they never used to have i don't that's think. good because the amount of times i've been in that queue just gone and then other people are pushing past each other and it just becomes a bit chaos uh so that said that's gonna as soon as people click on that's gonna happen nobody's gonna join that big ass queue anymore mm. So I'll just kind of go and shop and have a pint and then run up to the queue, jump a queue with your late ticket. Aye. It's a gamble, but it's a gamble that, in my experience, would absolutely well, man, save you now. Well, first, and... first of all, you do not get to do customs in an airport. Mid-airport. Mid-airport. Uh -huh. Just have better security everywhere. You do not get to be like, hey, man, you're going to have to do customs before you go through. Well, I'm not, but I'm not going to be in Germany at any point. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to Germany to fucking go to America to have to go through our customs. Just do it at the other end. Fuck off! That I the only reason I'm cool with that is because I feel like they're doing it to fuck us off. Like, I right, it's fine. It's only going to happen to you guys. Hmm. Oh, but is that right though? Like if because they're getting everybody else, anybody that's visited Britain oh, no, from no. G from Germany and visited Britain has mm. had to do that as well. It wasn't just the Brits. No. So they've gotten everyone. So it's not it's not just a fuck you to Brexit. No, no, it's not a Brexit thing. No, no, no. And, and pre Brexit existed. Mm -hmm. Skipole's been shit since it was done. Pre Brexit, we had to uh, check in in Europe. I don't think we did. Nah, passport stamp in that. I don't think we did. Oh, I'm fairly fucking confident we did. Well, we got, was it we... just that we went through this, uh, the easy scanners? Yeah, but that's still. It's still. That's scary. still customs. Yeah, I, I'm just saying you don't get to do any kind. If I'm not going, if your country is transit, mm -hmm. I don't have to do your customs. Uh, that's it. Just have better security all the way around the fucking airport and stop us getting out. Mm -hmm. It is a constant panic when you fly from Britain to anywhere in Europe <sighs> connect. But then again, when you connect within Europe, it's fine. When you connect within Europe, it's all right. It's us. Yeah. It's us, but by proxy them, because they're getting it on the way to Britain also. Aye. I do wish... Uh, we did fuck it up. We, oh, well, yeah, I mean... No, it wasn't, it wasn't my vote. Yeah, but it's our fucking... Yeah, but also, we didn't fucking vote for it because we were at Glastonbury. I know. <laughs> I still didn't forgive myself for that. Yeah, and I don't uh, forgive anyone that was at Glastonbury. And I don't forgive any of the... Fa Man, I will bitch and piss and moan about how bad the right wing in this country... Here's one thing I'll say about the right wing in this country. They're organised as fuck. No, no, they're not the right wing of America. They're not which is way better. <laughs> uh, you know, that's a whole population of people who mostly didn't vote. 
Because how could there wasn't a voting mm. station in Glastonbury? Aye. Everyone fucking singing, oh, Jeremy Corbyn, and not fucking voting. Not voting. Useless fucking wank. I hate the left in this country. Mm -hmm. Well, I hate the left in America more, but... They're useless. Mm -hmm. The left suck ass. I don't think they can run a country. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they should be allowed to run a country. <laughs> I, like the, I like the ideas, but their execution's bad, man. I, yeah, God. We really do. You really do just need a fucking... What what you need is you need a really centre party, right? That's just going to be like takes ideas from the left and is organised like the right. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, and takes ideas for the fucking right. But um, as much as we fucking hate to admit it, right? Something does need to be done done in terms of making immigration, and I say this in both America and the UK, a fairer and better mm -hmm. process, right? Illegal immigration, regardless of how fucking left wing you are is a problem. Do we need to take responsibility for the fact that the reason there are so many immigrants and refugees is because we're funding wars in other countries? Absolutely. That falls on us. We have a moral and ethical responsibility to take in Syrians and Afghans and, and fucking Haitians and every country we've ever fucking meddled with. We have a moral and ethical responsibility mm -hmm. to take those people in. What Where that moral should go is we should just make the country better as opposed to being like, fucking, uh, we're going to fund this cunt here to fuck all this shop. But illegal immigration d does legitimately take jobs away from not only hardworking people who are nationals, but hardworking legal immigrants, mm -hmm. like legal people that have come over for the, their fair fucking process. Like illegal immigration is a bad, bad thing and needs to be fucking not stopped, not next, not bombing boats, not stopping them coming over. There needs to be a fairer and better fucking process for it. Mm -hmm. So you need a centre party to be like, right, we are going to have to be not Nazis about this. But we're going to have to be a little bit stricter. We can't be your fucking airy fairy, let's let them all sort of thing. But also, every single one of you right wing cunts who's like, they've got to fucking speak our language. They've got to fucking Shoot fuck off. Oh, get yeah. to fuck. We're not doing not any of your shit. Not empathy having cunts as well. Like and I feel like, I feel like both America, well, maybe not, maybe not so much the UK now. America is desperate is desperate for some cunt to just come in down the middle and go, I hate both Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And they'd be like, oh man, we'll fuck get yeah. That's it, you're the guy. But they've got a two-party system, so that'll never fix itself. I feel like, because I think that's what happened in... Uh, the pendulum swing just seems to make it more and more extreme every election. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's getting less extreme now in the UK. I think that was the most extreme swing between left and right was Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn. We never had Jeremy Corbyn. No, that oh, in, in the election. The, the in the election. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but yeah, but we've never. But yeah, but we've never. We've, we've never. Because I can't we've get. We've never it. gone that far left, though. We've only ever gone as far left as fucking warmonger, fucking uh, Tony Blair, war criminal himself. Uh, that was the, you know. And just then fucking, fucking race traitor Gordon Brown. <laughs> and that actually fucking lost them everything, didn't it? Because he lost Scotland. Yeah. Lost Scotland over, over Gordon Brown, influence in Brexit. And yeah. then everyone was like, right, fuck it, which would, would all be making an influence here yeah, and voting for Labour and now we're voting SNP and mm -hmm. wanting independence. Yeah. And he's wanted independence before Brexit. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm the worst person to talk to about politics. I got, I got engaged in politics for a couple of years back in like before the lockdown. And I hated everybody. <laughs> I hated everybody that I spoke to. Aye. And I like, I'm now, I live the life of a dog. <laughs> That's <laughs> just that, that, eating wags me tail, guns for walks. That's the way it be, man. Like I, I listen to, and I hate the fact that I am this because I, ne I never thought I would be this person when I was fucking twenty five, twenty seven, or even fucking, you know, twenty nine. I listen to three political podcasts a day. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I read the I read two newspapers every fucking morning. <laughs> right. And when I say read newspapers, and I bet you someone like Ryan Cullen will still argue with you, like now's better because he's read a clickbait headline. That's me fucking. Nice. That that's what would kill us. Uh, I would be having conversations <laughs> with people. I remember, um, I remember talking to me my and dad about the manifestos for mm. quite some time. Yeah, right, and um, it just started to sink in that they hadn't read any of them. Mm. Right. And then I put them to bed. I was like, hey, you read any of them? And they're like, no. Nah. I was like, not even the one you're voting for that you're bigging on. Because right. I've read that one as well. And we can talk about it if you've read it. I've read both the, manifestos. The, the, they played it like they'd read it. And then I <laughs> turned out they hadn't. And I'm like, why are you, 
Why are you arguing with us about a film you haven't seen? Uh, you're like, this isn't a democracy. It's not, if we're not all, if we're not all educated to the same fucking degree and we're not all getting our news from a fair fucking source, this is not a democracy that we live in. Like, it's the illusion of a democracy. Mm -hmm. Oh, it does my nine. And, and I'll get fucking wound up, right? And I'll do that thing where I'll listen to something left and I'll be like, right, you've got to, you've got to go the other way. You've got to consume something right wing because whether it's to challenge the perspective you already have or at least find out what the people who you disagree with believe because nobody believes they're a bad person deep down. Mm. Uh, and you think they're voting for the right yeah, so, yeah, so I, and obviously the best way to convert anyone is never to yell at them, right? Mm -hmm. Yelling at, at people feels good, feels nice, has never fixed a single problem ever in the fucking world unless it resulted in the murder at the end of that. And I don't mm -hmm. really consider that fixing a problem. I just think it's, you know, ending an argument. Um, I just, I get, I, get, I get so wound up and I'll, co I'll come upstairs and Cara who does not give a fucking shit about anything, I'd be like, oh, man, I, I just, I can't understand why the Republicans are the way they are. They're like, she's like, yeah, but Joe Biden's president. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but the Republicans have this, the, the Senate, but not the House, to be fair. Mm -hmm. But they're probably going to lose the House if Joe Biden wins the thing, which means if he even gets a fucking second term, that he'll not be able to get any of his things through. And the reason they want, and she's like, does this make you happy? And I'm like, no. She's like, does it make you feel in control? And I'm like, no. She's like, why, what, why are you doing this? Uh, what happens is we have a great day together with our son and then she takes him up to bed and I and clean the house. You're going to angry. Frantically. By the way, they're running the world. Vodka. Something you've got no influence over. But you want to be informed because it's your job to commentate on the world. But not even, not, but, not even to commentate on. I just, I just feel like you have like, uh, look, I, I believe that you can change people's minds in good ways by challenging them. I don't think you have a responsibility to, well, no, if I, I do think you have a responsibility to do it. I, I couldn't get over how many people's minds were made up with such limited information and you had no influence. People who you think had some respect for you, you would have no sway over their opinion by going out and doing shit tons of research and then coming back with information that like, should influence them but mm. doesn't i couldn't believe how steadfast everybody i knew was mm. you know and, there was a great big scientific <laughs> study that was found and i think i've said this on the podcast before but it is a fact that people who say do your own research mm -hmm. do the least research mm -hmm. yeah no, no shit no shit no shit <laughs> Are you kidding me? Because what they'll do, what they consider research is, is finding the thing they want. Yeah, go they Google found the my thing opinion. They, uh -huh, they found the thing they wanted mm. that fits their narrative and went, there is the research that I've done, that's enough. Uh, like all of these things are contradicted. I'm not going to sift through all that and find out which one's right. The truth, which mm. is research, and that's what it is. I'm going to get this bit of information isolated from the rest of the information and present it to you as you didn't do enough research to find this. That being said, I will say, what's right there, I definitely have not done my full research on the Scottish hate speech laws yet, and mm -hmm. I do need to do more. All I did was read two articles today Hi. and go, it's weird that I find the right-wing troll. And also, the right-wing trolls doing it are the worst people. They are neo-Nazis. They are far-right people who want this law to not exist so they can say transphobic things, so they can say the N-word, so that they can be anti-Islamist. Like... I, I don't agree with them in any way of what their opinions are, but when their it comes... Their motives. Yeah, 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 yeah. But their methods. <laughs> <laughs> Always to be admired. Yeah, yeah. Which is, which is my same stance on the Holocaust. <laughs> right. I, I couldn't have pulled that off. No, no. I a fucking million years. I don't agree with the target of the Holocaust. <laughs> nah. But I do agree. I truly believe if you were to give me what five feat. years... What a feat. If you were to give me five years, I could find... Six million people who should actually die, and I can make the world a better place by getting rid of them. But they're not all the same race, they're not all the same gender, they're not all the same religion, they're not all the same caste, they're not all the same capability, they're not all the same age. I could come up with six million fucking people who I'm like, if we were to get rid of these ones, three million of them are Russian. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think I could get it. 
I don't think I have the organisational skills we to, do the, to do that with don't, ants. Don't, don't do, at least the train's right on time. We <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think I could have done it with, like, in any, like, not just not just people, mm. but, like, you know, if you go, right, right, we've got to kill six million ants. Yeah. Using all your reach and power and influence. Yeah. I'd kill a couple of thousand ants. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to find out where they live. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you ever oh, go completely <laughs> fucking left to field here, right? <laughs> Have you ever seen, right? They wanted to find out. I, I, I can't remember where in the world this is. They wanted to find out how uh, big ant colonies were in terms of underground, just like the, the scope of like the, the tunnels and everything, right? <laughs> so there's, the, there's this video where they're like, right, we're going to find out. They pour, they find an anthill and they just pour liquid cement down in it and they just keep pouring it down like they're feeding a fucking goose meat to make F frog water. Yeah. Not meat, sorry, grain and everything to fucking. They just start pouring all of the cement in and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. We're using bags and bags of cement. We're using tons and tons of cement, way more than they ever thought they'd ever have to fucking use. And it and they thought it would only take them like a couple of days to like dig up and excavate. It ends up taking them like almost a month to excavate this thing. And they pull this thing out of the ground eventually. And it is massive. It is huge. It's this giant bit of natural art, all these tunnels. And I'm like, did, did you move the ants? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, I've changed. I've changed my thing. I reckon I probably could. <laughs> a couple of bags of cement. I reckon well, I could probably get six million do ants. Aunt Vesuvius. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Pompeii. Pompeii. Ah. <laughs> oh, my favorite Bastille song. Which fall I know because I don't know much. Pompeii wasn't the name of the volcano, was it? It's the name of the town. The name like, of the city. Oh, so, so it maybe could, Vesuvius could, could, could well have been. Oh, that'll make me feel less stupid. That'll make me feel way less fucking stupid. Pompeii volcano. Please be, please be a smart man. Please be. <gasps> fucking yeah, yes! It, right. it is Vesuvius. Right. You were still correct because I got the name of the thing, but yeah. Mm. Um, I think this concludes our podcast, but we are going to instantly hit record again and answer your questions from the Patreon. Anybody who subscribes to our Patreon, thank you. If you do, if you're in the same seats tier or the dad tier, you get the right to a question. Every time we do a Q&A and some of you have pitched them in. Oh, and there will be an advert halfway through this, but just uh, to... The best way you can support this podcast at the moment, apart from obviously being a patron, but even if you don't want to be a patron, even if you're like, hey man, the quality of this thing is not good enough. 70% of this podcast is just you bitching about airports and hotel staff. And I don't know if I want the private mm. version of that yet. If you want something that benefits you and gives you a good experience uh, for X money, supporting Thistley Cross and buying Thistley Cross by using our code on their website within the UK makes us look very, very good to them and lets them know that we have reached, that we told them that we had. And in the past couple of months, you guys have been way better. And mm -hmm. we're very, very grateful. We know you've been enjoying the whiskey. We know you've been, pardon me, sending uh, photos and, and tagging us in all of your purchases. Please continue to do that. There is a new code for April. Uh, and it is... Thistley Sloss April, all capital letters. Yeah, all capital letters. Thistley Sloss April, you can buy any order on thistleycross.co.uk, including the ones that you've seen me drink all this episode, which is the... I know we're not meant to have fucking favourites, but it's categorically the fucking best Whiskey one. Whiskey cask one's amazing. It's, unbel yeah. it's unbelievable. Like, and I've been drinking like, uh, whenever I'm doing clean up and carries upstairs, I'll just have I'll just have a bottle just while I'm listening to my podcast to just try and fucking calm myself down about the death of democracy. I'll I'll go to the summer fruits. I'll go to the elderflower. I'll go to the original and the traditional. They're all good. Well, you know what? When it's I like, found a box, because this is the one I get the least of, because the, whenever we get the stock in, everyone fucking takes these boxes away. There's uh, there's quite a range on the alcohol volume of them as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Any, anywhere from 3.3 to uh, 6.7 on this. Yeah, so that's why you reach for that one. <laughs> oh, no, it's the best. It's the, it's the best flavour. I, I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about the alcohol content. Um, oh, no, as long as, long as you're doing responsibly. Yeah. Uh, 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 that, then, then you're allowed to talk about it as long as you're not we can't be like you can get if you're driving to this one. podcast yeah yeah do what, do what, if you're driving to this in Scotland you can't drink anything mm. at all even the day before so mm. don't bother um, so yep go subscribe if you want 
but go definitely go drink some Thistle Cross and I'll see you. Well, we're going to do it in five minutes, but you'll get it in like three or four days. Oh, no, if you listen to it on Public Channel, you'll get it tomorrow. All right. See you then, Cats. You can probably just get it now. <laughs>